when I was when we were playing around more with like Baku, right? And we're talking about like perception, reality tunnels, how we interact with like actual like reality is this Taurus like tunnel <laughs> and it like gets like um created like every second by our our brains constructed you know tile by tile whether we realize it or not right and like baku is like this like kind of like weird thing like keeping the the seams together <laughs> like, the, the mechan <laughs> actually, actually the mechanism is that doubling yeah of the you know in order to to have this anticipation of the future otherwise we we shouldn't be able to yeah so to stabilize like to stabilize reality yeah atomizing the like shadow you know <laughs> <laughs> Creating, uh, construction. you know and there was this other and i never heard the term and i am not going to be able to pronounce it but so there was someone who did a um ai picture uh generated picture of um gibson william G gibson Anyways, he's a science fiction writer, right? And he's like, oh, um, my something would, like, oh, that's a pretty good one, but my something wouldn't recognize it. And I had to look up that term, and I, uh, for the life of me, I'm not going to remember it. But the, the term is that you, you create these um, imaginative entities. <laughs> like, that's what the term meant. So, like, and, and then, huh? Egregore? I think so, maybe. Anyways, yeah, yeah, like, and and I was thinking because he's a writer too, but like it meant like you create a character that has like a life of his own, you know, <laughs> like it, it's a it's a thing like out in the world, <laughs> like it starts off in your head, right? But now now it's it's its own uh, narrative, living narrative, and and brand and whatever, you know. Um, Picture, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, I thought that was kind of like uh, funny and interesting that like that's how he responded to that um, AI generated art of him. <laughs> but, oh yeah, that's it. yeah. I was thinking, how cool could be to you know like to you, you know how how Kemper technology works. Kemper is this the this profiling uh, system that a uh, creates a map from amplifiers, microphones, pedals, everything and you know keep it as in as digital information. So you can use literally those amplifiers with different microphones and different combinations. You know, so I was thinking about how cool it could be to use that kind of technology to map a whale and to be able to create this experience when you are a whale and you travel through the world mm -hmm. being a whale, you know, <laughs> like digitally, that could be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know, that's like a interesting too because um, how they navigate, you know, like echolocation and stuff like that is interesting. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love whales. How would you much. like animate yeah. the whale? Like, would it take an input from you, or just a like a linear sonic experience, or or do you sort of have whale agency? That makes sense. Yeah, it would be cool to yeah. have whale agency. <laughs> but you know, like that's what I think. I, you're saying so you get like the actual raw uh, real data from like a uh, you know the best data we could get from like an actual like living whale right like <laughs> and yeah, you create yeah, that cool. concert and then weird. like I guess you're able to orchestrate like the moves right and then there would be like, yeah. an environment where you could like I guess swim it's around logic. and do stuff it's an organism yeah, yeah. You map the entire organism with uh, the. It has to be the ele electromagnetic spectrum of it to know, you know, exactly yeah. what everything is. It uh, names doesn't matter. It's just you know, like 
intensity of frequency legs. <laughs> I don't know how deep it gets, you know? Yeah. I don't know, it's superficial, but, but with amplifiers, it works like, oof, it's amazing. You have like these amplifiers that doesn't exist you know, anymore from the 50s. Yeah. I was, I'll be thinking, right I was thinking of a different way too, is like exploring sound like a whale would. <laughs> like you're in a room that's just like totally blank, right? Like fucking nothing. But all it is is like the intensity of the, the frequency of the sound. <laughs> That's what. Uh, you know, what is that <laughs> instrument where, you, like, you play on top of it and then like it and oh, fucking who was talking about that? Someone was talking about it. I was listening to an instrument that you play on top of it. Yeah, like it, it's like um, it's like a ex- ex- xylophone, but like it, it's it's a, a like you mess around with the static or something. Like you have, you have like this this bow, and then like it like creates the feedback, and you go, yeah, yeah. You fuck around with it, but you don't like touch anything, but you like hover around it. Yeah, yeah, just with with yeah, yeah. with the ecl- electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, and the you, sensitivity it, you have, of the of the you know, yeah. It's connected to to this yeah, sound. The stat- yeah, the but, static. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. But that was like something like that. That would be kind of like cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, do you guys see this flotarium thing I sent to, into the group? Oh, in the yeah, the group. Yeah. Group. I, I was we'll thinking you know, that w- that would be amazing. You know, like some waterproof headset, so you get into the into the whatever this capsule calls. Visual snow is it? Float and listen to to. The first track, Concepcion, something like that. <laughs> that might be some really immersive experience. Have you I'll, ever I'll thought ask, about I will call them <laughs> loops, like a, a loop of uh, conception, so you could sort of stay as long as you felt like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of bright, you know, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, I've always it could kind be of intense. Crazy. You know, it could be really intense also. Well, it depends on you know, the mix, but it takes takes you puts you Yeah, in, my one set a, time. Yeah, but sure. The the eternal conception <laughs> track that definitely makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> You know, there was one the one thing too that um, I read once that that I think it's like um, like something that I think I'm trying to do that we're it's already like we're already doing in a sense. But I read this. Um, I think it was like one of the essays in Naropa's disembodied poetics. Like they ha- they have like um, you know a publication like at the end of the year a yearly publication from the school. Um, but anyways, one of the essays. Fuck, what, what was the original topic? But anyways, he was talking about, like, William S. Burroughs and, and Yahe letters and, and him. But then he mentions this story about, like, this, um... I think it was, like, this missionary. He goes down to South America and then he gets, like, kidnapped by, like, this tribe. And they keep him there for like years and he becomes part of the tribe. But he writes a book later, right? And the tribe, what's kind of interesting about this tribe, they use ayahuasca and they use ayahuasca like as this way to like um, um, help them for the hunt. And like they, so like before they go on the hunt, like they they do this like um, group ayahuasca ritual. And they said he says that like in that ritual they like everything in there is like focused on like what they're gonna do like for the next weekend when they go hunting, and so like every symbol everything is like connected to that experience and like everybody in the tribe because they they share the same kind of like narrative threads they know what all these like uh you know like a fucking 
cosmic serpent coming from like interstellar space is like you know they're no longer like wowed by that but they know what that means and they're okay well, we need to pay attention to this we need to do that <laughs> you know the, and it's like it's like, like hard it. hardcore information that they're gonna use like tomorrow to do what they do and like they, they have they share like this group mind when they're like hunting as well and the, the group mind is in the ayahuasca as well but like the only way you get there is you have this like fabric of a narrative that is like shared over time, you know, like within the tribe and stuff like that. And then so like, this is like the weird part too, where what I was thinking about, like, yeah, it's true. Like what Ari was saying about the social singularity, getting a billion people on the internet and blowing up consensus reality is like, you know, everybody has their own narratives and like, they're like blood forcing, like attacking everybody with it. <laughs> And uh, I think, like, so, uh, in, in my own way of narratively making sense in my mind of, like, why, why I like to, like, do certain things I like to do and, and why I'm more attracted to these certain ideas, I think, like, the narrative mandala, like, in, in this, like, grand narrative sense is, like, this compass to, like, navigate the... the the like um, noise storm of narratives that that is like propagating <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Maybe it's like a Faraday cage for for all of this. Like you can, like you get it and you, like you put it, and then it like <laughs> creates like this like space. <laughs> <laughs> I think they need one of those. <laughs> yeah.